This was in 06. 06. Long before Imelda was Secretary of State. The deal gave ARMZ, operating as Uranium One, control of all of the Canadian company's international assets, which stretch from Central Asia to the Central United States. Among those assets is control over more than 10,000 acres of uranium mining claims in southeast Utah, ownership of the Utah town of Tickaboo near Lake Powell, and control of the inactive Shutaring uranium mill there. The consolidation makes Uranium One the fifth largest uranium producer in the world. Shortly before the transaction, the Russian company opened the regional headquarters in Bodo Park, Utah. A few more paragraphs for those of you who are bored already and would rather talk about transgender actors. The perspective on the ground in the southwest does not reflect Zivov's optimism. Courtesy of a loophole in the 1872 mining law, the Russian government operating as Uranium One will be tapping the region's uranium virtually free of charge. The mining law was signed into law by President Ulysses S. Grant, in order to encourage rapid settlement of the American West. The law continues to allow companies to stake and develop mining claims without paying royalties to the United States government. We've been seeing this trend for the last 10 to 15 years. Remember, this was written in 06. Explained Jeff Parsons of the Western Mining Action Project. Multinational companies have gradually been taking over mineral rights all over the West. Then they benefit greatly from our 19th century mining policy, where they essentially get the minerals for free and never have to pay a royalty. Conclusion. The case of Uranium One could be an especially difficult pill to swallow. First, the Russian government will be tapping the West's uranium free of charge and likely exporting it to Europe and Asia. Second, ARMZ has acted as the source of uranium for Iran's rogue nuclear program, meaning that yellow cake mined in Utah could find its way into reactors in Tehran. How Russians Got Our Uranium, Durango Telegraph, 110106. The story came out shortly after the Clintons did a deal with Kazakhstan. Which leads me back in my circle to the earthquakes in Nepal. You say, okay, wow, this is horrible. Maybe it's global warming. Well, first of all, it has nothing to do with it. Because there were earthquakes in this area for a long period of time. And Nepal is located on the boundary of two major tectonic plates. And they've suffered large earthquakes over the centuries, going back in recorded history to 1255 A.D., when they had the first recorded earthquake in the history of Nepal. And you know what happened in that year? During that earthquake, nearly one-third of the total population of Kathmandu were killed. And among those killed were the king of Kathmandu Valley. And the earthquake magnitude at that time is believed to be around 7.7 .7 on the Richter scale. Today, what is the uh, sc the scale was what, Robert? About 8-something? 7-8, all right. So there was a 7-7 back in 1255 uh, before Etzel's father created the Model T Ford. <clears throat> there was a 7-7 back then before industrialization destroyed the universe. <clears throat> Another big earthquake was recorded in Nepal in 1260 A.D. during the reign of a king. Buildings, temples was destroyed. Many lives were lost in 1408 A.D. during the reign of another king. Major earthquake destroyed the te another temple. Many other buildings. And 1767, 1810, 1823, many, many earthquakes. Many earthquakes. So don't let the warmest panic you into thinking it's about global warming. Nepal is located uh, on two major tectonic plates, on the boundary of the two of them. And in the past century alone, just four earthquakes more powerful than magnitude 6.0 have occurred within 250 kilometers of the 25th of April 2015 event. In 1934, there was a magnitude 8.0 earthquake known as the Nepal-Bihar earthquake. It killed 10,600 people. It damaged the capital, 1934. It remains the most deadly earthquake in Nepal's history. Now, I'm not telling you this to diminish the human catastrophe of this current earthquake. I'm telling you to put it in context. History is very important. It's, a, it's a very important for us. And so if you see that this devastating earthquake is devastating, but in context, there have been other devastating earthquakes in Nepal, maybe you won't stay up late and worry so much about whether the world is coming to an end. Maybe you'll worry about Obama passing the DACA Act, which has led to filthy little universities like Santa Rosa Junior College 
run by diehard anti-American communists who have opened up a dream center, which they call a one-stop shop, quote, in a safe and caring place for undocumented students, while poor white kids need not apply, they can go to hell. How do you like that? How do you like that? Now, that's an earthquake. That's a real earthquake. And then you look at the, the Nepal earthquake, you could say, wait a minute, maybe the world is coming to an end. And you could become a catastrophist. It's a great word, a catastrophist. I'm sort of a catastrophist. I've always been a catastrophist. And uh, I'm in good company. I'm in the company of some great giants in history. But you look at the Nepal earthquake and you say, oh, boy, I never heard of Mount Everest being shaken by an earthquake. That's like the bedrock of the world. Mount Everest hit by an earthquake? Now, if you don't know history, whether it's geological history or history history, you can let the global warmers, the liars who were selling us that bill of goods, tell you it's due to Earth's uh, warming and the Earth got upset and it seized up and blah, blah, blah. But it's not true. I realize that the Clintons are the luckiest couple on Earth, America, be damned. Because as you well know, the earthquake has wiped the uranium scandal off the uh, pages. It's gone. The greatest scandal... I would say since the Teapot Dome scandal, the greatest scandal in my lifetime, which is the uranium transfer scandal, the average dummy doesn't even know about it. No, never heard of it. They don't even know what uranium is. But uh, it's a big scandal nevertheless, and it's gone. The earthquake covered it up. I want to shift, though, to something entirely different. A plane bound for Amman, Jordan, goes down in the Caspian Sea. The crash yields no survivors except the hijacker. And a cask containing an agent of unprecedented destructive potential is missing from the plane wreckage. A carefully plotted terrorist attack has been put into motion, and the resulting chaos might be enough to push America toward another costly war. Countdown to Mecca. It's a gripping page-turner. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust to protect my wealth. We have a former president who thinks only of victims such as those in the Haiti earthquake, a man who thinks so much of the world and is so selfless with regard to himself and his wife Hillary, that he would work feverishly to get the uranium ore of America in the hands of Russia to make certain that we can never build another atomic weapon. I mean, this is the kind of world we're in. It's a perfect world. It's a good world. And that's why I have rose-colored glasses on. And we're talking about the Nepal earthquake and showing you how it's related in some way to, really, this history of earthquakes in Nepal going back centuries. But you're going to hear from the liars that it's related to the temperature and the this and the that and the Earth's mantle and the the structure with the degrees and the carbon dioxide that came up from the seltzer bottles in New York that exploded going back into the 1920s, pushed itself into the deep recesses of the IRT, and from the IRT it went under the Atlantic Ocean, and it tried to uh, escape in Italy, but because the Pope was so mean against gays, the gas had to continue all the way up into India, and, and it affected Nepal. Yeah, you'll hear that too, I can guarantee. <laughs> Listen... You know, when I'm in a good mood as I am today, I can laugh about all of it. Some days I feel like I'm behind the eight ball. Today I feel like I am the eight ball. <laughs> no, I feel like I'm the cue stick, not the eight ball. It's a beautiful world, and we do have a lot of bad people in it. We have a real lot of bad actors running America. I've never seen such a low level of grifter that we've seen now. In my day and age, we had grifters. Never at this level. Never would they have sold our uranium ore to Russia that would have been considered a, a capital crime. They would have been tried for treason. They certainly would have been given a trial. If they could show any connection between it and any pay for play, they go to jail. Possible uh, execution for this. Now they wind up on the Jimmy Fallon show, telling another joke. That's all. Another government jester. Jimmy Fallon. A government jester. They create them. NBC creates the government jesters through all their subsidiaries, and they get benefits from it. That's That's why they do it. That's why NBC creates this. The parent company that owns NBC and all the other companies, they get government contracts. Take a look at it. See if I'm making it up. So I can eat my heart out over it. That's all. I just kind of fit it in. And then I moved on to um, Emmanuel Velikovsky, Earth and Upheaval. You know, talked about what caused the extinction of animals, Noah's flood, and how various cultural public uh, cultural records. In different times of history, like the Jewish flood in the Hebrew Bible, right, called the Jewish flood, 
Well, you find the same flood described in the Greek legends, in the Deucalion, in the Manu legend of India, the same thing that there was a great flood. And Velikovsky put all this together, and he said these were not just myths and legends, but they were actual records of what occurred. And he said the reason we had forgotten they were real is because of what he called, uh, in his psychoanalytical background, he named it cultural amnesia. In America right now, we have political amnesia. We don't understand that Barack Obama is a representative of an archetype and that he has appeared in other countries and in other nations through time. And there are other devils out there. I named Chris Christie the poor sign Jersey demagogue. Wow. He's too obese and he's more reptilian than Machiavellian. Chris Christie is a, is a figment of the past now. In my day, they most, he mostly could have owned was two diners in Passaic. That's not a bad business, by the way. Don't knock it. You don't have to accept money in the middle of the night if you own a diner. You can make an honest living. You don't have to meet outside a motel room and get a, a sack of cash. Obama did the thing. Ah, the roast that they do. I, was, I, I wouldn't go to it. No, I was. I was invited two years in a row years ago. World at Daily had a table. I didn't want to go to Washington to sit and listen to a, a president tell stale jokes to make him look like a nice guy. They're all grifters, and that's what the, what the problem is. There's a lot of other news. Now, the Clinton cash book is huge. It's the biggest scandal of my lifetime. The transfer of the uranium ore to Russia. Absolutely treason. And, uh, and it's gone already because of the earthquake. Which again is that maybe you think it's a bad joke. I'll repeat it again. When I woke up this morning, saw the earthquake was larger than we had heard about yesterday, I had to think, really, whether Bill Clinton had the government of Nepal trigger the earthquake for a donation to the Clinton Foundation. Then I realized that's absurd. That couldn't have happened. And it's just that they're the luckiest couple on earth. Savage.